Hi everybody, how you doing? Welcome to the first episode of Season 3, Rock to the Cloud. I know you guys have been chomping at the bit to get hold of the latest episodes in the latest season of this exciting series all about server and cloud technology. Um, I know I've been dying to do it, honest. Uh, anyway, so um, there's lots and lots going on, as always. Um, you know, time moves fast in the world of tech. And... Um, no sooner uh, do we start season three that we're going to talk about some, you know, things that maybe we haven't talked about before, um, which is kind of we're often thinking about just our own tech. But actually, I think today we're going to try and talk about something a little bit different. We're going to kind of, you know, figure out a little bit more about Azure Stack HCI, but we're also going to see how it stacks up against maybe the competition, uh, just to give you a little bit of insights of that. So for the next 30 minutes, as always, you're not talking to just me. Um, we've got a fantastic guest and... Um, you know, maybe later on I might reveal a little something to you. Um, but we've got a fantastic guest, uh, Jason Watson. Hi, Jason. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening, wherever you are. But it's good morning yeah, to you. Too. How are you? <laughs> uh, I'm good, thank you. I'm very well. Excellent, excellent. So um, obviously we're talking to you today. We're going to talk about um, uh, some HCI, Azure Stack uh, kind of stuff. But like before we get into that, like let's just tell everybody out there in the wide world, why why have we got the luxury and the privilege of talking to you, sir? Well, you've got the luxury of talking to me, my friend, is because I joined Microsoft, I think, 11 weeks ago now. This is my 12th week. Um, wow, you're a baby. I, I am a baby. It's been a heck of a roller coaster, I can tell you that. Um, and my role here at Microsoft is fundamentally to drive Azure Stack HCI through our OEM and partner community. Um, on top of that, I've also got Windows Server within my remit. Uh, so driving, you know, the, the usual attached licensing scenarios that we have with our DISTs, OEMs, resellers. Um, so kind of two strings to my bow, but they kind of meet in the middle when you think about Azure Stack HCI and Windows Server Data Center. Cool. So um, apart from your 11 weeks of experience, you're totally the man to talk to about all this stuff. I love it. Um, well, <laughs> yes. Uh, there's also things that I don't know. So, you know, don't. Okay. I think the, the one disclaimer I will make right at the very start of this is that, you know, I am not an expert on every other product out there, but... Um, you know, we've done a little bit of research before we came onto this, and uh, and and yeah, let's let's just be clear that you know there could be certain things that may not be accurate, but hopefully they are. Well, I think you know ultimately, um, you know, the rock in the cloud has always been a place where we can just have uh, an open conversation, and you know, I think the whole point of this is that we give people some you know insights context food for thought um you know certainly people need to go off and do their own research get onto microsoft docs and, and get your exams done um through your fundamentals and all that good stuff go and do your research um obviously a disclaimer here we try our best to just make things just give you some clarity and some insights and kind of hopefully inspire you to go and find out a little bit more about some of this tech so without further ado and um, i hate it when i say that that's a really horrible thing presentary thing to say um but um you know, we're going to talk to you now jason about azure stack hci and how it stacks up stacks up see what we did there uh, against you, the competition is um, that a pun is it it was it was um the uh, i'm uh, you know i'm probably going to give up my job on microsoft and go and work at the sun newspaper um see um you know but... my dream job by the way i would love to do that <laughs> Mr. fantastic Fun yeah i think i think i think writing puns would be a, a brilliant job um but let's move away from puns and let's ask you some questions about azure stack hci so uh jay i'm gonna call you jay is jay all right do you like jay that's all right Tom. no problem Okay, perfect. Um, <laughs> I, I, love, I love the dry wit. Um, so Azure Stack HCI, well, I think obviously every, everybody at Microsoft would say um, it's a great platform for customers who are requiring a hybrid and multi-cloud solution. But why, Jay? Why is it uh, a great solution for, for, you know, for those things? <clears throat> I think, well, first of all, it's, it's hybrid by design, right? So what does that mean? So if you look at other HCI platforms from vendors such as Nutanix, VMware, and HPE, they were initially created to support software-defined solutions that serve the purpose of consolidating infrastructure footprint. And as a result, okay. simplifying, simplifying out operations. Um, but what wasn't originally considered was the interoperability with public cloud platforms such as Azure, AWS, or Google, for example. So okay. over the last few years, uh, you know, the Microsoft strategy, as you very well know, um, has been, of course, heavily focused on providing infrastructure services in the public cloud. But I think as the markets developed, 
I think you know it's become very apparent that around 78 percent of customers will adopt a hybrid cloud strategy. So as such, you know Microsoft may be kind of late in the day with an Azure Stack HCI platform, but you know they've designed that platform with exactly the hybrid motion in mind, and it can therefore therefore be viewed as you know extending all the benefits of those public cloud services to workloads that need to reside on premise. But it also delivers those operational benefits of hyper converged mm -hmm. solutions simultaneously that you would ordinarily find with those legacy systems. So with native integration into Azure Arc and Azure Monitor, customers are further able to connect to hybrid services like Azure Security Center, Azure Backup, Azure Site Recovery. And that ultimately provides a capability of being able to monitor and manage clusters at scale and be able to centrally manage VMs from the Azure portal, for example. Okay. Because it's delivered as an Azure service, uh, your HCI operating system is able to take advantage of things like regular and consistent feature and security updates, uh, unified Azure billing, and the, abil uh, the ability to leverage your existing uh, Azure support plan. And additionally, with Azure Stack HCI, because it's built on the foundations of Windows Server and Hyper-V, you can continue to use those familiar tools like Windows Admin Center and, of course, uh, the Azure portal, You know, therefore removing that need for upskilling uh, your staff. Um, in comparison, uh, you know, if you look at AWS, for example, this follows more of a monocloud approach, meaning vendor lock-in, uh, and which kind of relies on heavy investments with the AWS native technologies. Uh, okay. You know, look at Nutrix, uh, sorry, looking at Nutanix hybrid cloud implementations, um, they can be inflexible and actually significantly more expensive. Um, for example, customers who would need to procure uh, Azure bare metal infrastructure and still need to purchase, sorry, they would still need to purchase that uh, Nutanix HCI license. So the total mm. cost is therefore uh, significantly higher, which could actually be prohibitive for customers with a smaller infrastructure footprint and who maybe want to leverage a hybrid cloud platform. So I'm just thinking about what you've kind of gone through there, I think, and, and again, I'm sort of doing my own summary for the end of the, the show, but I'm, you know, what, what I've understood from what you've said is, is that the forward thinking, far reaching, long term approach is with the, the Azure Stack solution, because actually it gives you the ability to do all of the things at every layer, depending upon what you need to do when you need to do it. And actually punching those things in and out is actually in the long term, more cost effective than maybe looking at solutions which offer you a solutions that offer you solutions but <laughs> things that offer you that 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 fixed to that that problem today so i've got this problem today um i can go and get this appliance that will go and do this thing but actually in the long term you're going to end up needing to change and scale that and that's going to cost you more money further down the road so that's kind of what i've kind of summarized and heard from what you said so it makes sense that actually there's <coughs> more of all products and services from Microsoft with Azure and uh, the Azure Stack solution um, than maybe going on specific little things. And actually in the long run, that can actually save you money. So when I think about the, com the competitive landscape that's out there, and you've touched on a couple of you know, uh, AWS and Nutanix, what, what, are, what are those solutions or the, or the key vendor solutions that are kind of comparable to kind of what we're doing um, with Azure Stack? So I think there are two types of players in this market as I see it. Uh, as you say, several I've mentioned already, you know, but they are, I'd categorize it in, t you know, in two, two sectors. So there's the legacy mm -hmm. on-premise HCI vendors such as VMware, Nutanix, HPE, SimpliVity, Cisco, um, but also those public cloud providers such as AWS, Google, Oracle, and IBM. Of course, they all need to sit on hardware platforms such as Dell, HPE, Lenovo, NetApp, and Cisco, names you just hear and repeated there but mm -hmm. as do Microsoft. So this fundamentally means that there's lots of cross-pollination and a variety of solutions for customers to consider when they're selecting hybrid or a hybrid hyper-converged solution. So we're already seeing, and I think we can expect to see all those public cloud providers being heavily focused on building, building out their own on-premise hybrid solutions. Uh, it's ultimately an effort to emulate what we're bringing to market today. Uh, and similarly, many of those HCI vendors, the VMwares of the world, they're all working in harmony with the public cloud providers like, you know, VMware on AWS or, you know, VMware with Azure actually now. So, but I think it's worth noting that Microsoft is able to work with most of those aforementioned in some form or other, whether it be hardware or in public cloud. You know, if you're bringing Azure Arc on to uh, manage your VMware estate that's running in AWS, you know, all possible. Um, but our key objective is to meet those customer needs and resolve issues for where they are today 
as well as facilitate those choices for their, you know, for any future scenarios, right? We're not going to do a big lift and shift in every instance. It may be possible sure. one day. To, um, but, you know, you, you, we've got to be flexible, but we're not trying to vendor lock in. You know, we've got a very simplistic solution in terms of Azure and our on-premise HCI, but we recognize that customers are not always going to do that. But I think the point yeah. being, you know, across all of these hybrid and multi-cloud entities, there's going to be lots mm -hmm. of competing offerings and scenarios, but it's the shorter time to value that's going to ultimately prove, ultimately prove what's going to be the most important factor for any customer selection. Mm. Uh, and I suppose, you know, you touched on it there with, you know, multi-cloud. There, there's actually so many things out there that it's, it's probably very unlikely that any one business is going to have any one solution. So actually, you've got to be able to work across all of those things, and they've got to interlink with each other. Um, and when we think about the, you know, the, the, those <coughs> or the primary differentiators between Azure Stack HCI um, and kind of, um, you know, the other products that are on the market, can you can you name a few of those differentiators for us, just for the audience, so that they can understand, like, why why is Azure Stack HCI different? Uh, well, I think I would say it's the following. So number number one, building security. I think as I mentioned, okay. Azure Stack HCI has native integration with Azure. Therefore, it's going to grant you instant access. You know, if you get, not, notwithstanding the fact that Microsoft is, and I think it's about $10 billion security company within its own right. Uh, so yeah. all the expertise that we can bring to market for that on-premise solution um, and extending, as I say, the Azure capabilities, such as Azure Security Center, Azure Site Recovery, Azure Backup, uh, we also facilitate extended security updates. More on that uh, we can talk about later. Um, but you also get secured core, uh, secure core server support. You know, for you know that ultimate enterprise security uh, requirement. Uh, you can manage security events and protect from security threats using Azure Defender and Azure Sentinel. And I think finally, shielded VMs. You know, protecting your VM from another unauthorized access is something that differentiates. You know, when you compare to other uh, examples. So, you know, let's look at that. So, uh, with AWS, I'm getting some feedback. Uh, with AWS, uh, local security tools manage AWS resources only, and they cannot be extended to AWS outposts, ex you know, example, Guard Duty, Security Hub, or CloudWatch. With Nutanix, I think the security is less robust and is charged separately. So, as I understand, uh, data encryption is charged as a paid add on. Uh, and for that mm. basic starter license edition, it's not available at all. Um, there's also no concept of shielded VMs and further, there's also an extra charge for encryption. So that limits its availability uh, to their most expensive, uh, you know, to their most expensive pa package um, and could be co cost prohibitive, get my teeth back in, uh, for SMB type scenarios. So, you know, their encryption requires an expensive, expensive external management key, uh, or key management server or KMS. Uh, and is a separate component to make that work. Comparatively, Azure Stack HCI uses free data encryption with BitLocker, which leverages uh, our Active Directory, which protects your data. Nutanix also lacks shielded, uh, lacks shielded VMs, which limits that number of physical hosts a VM can run. And that means if someone steals a virtual hard drive uh, or VHD file from a deployment running on Azure Stack HCI, they won't be able to open it for access, uh, to access uh, any files if the hardware is a, a TPM module of uh, version 1.2 or later. Uh, these are some notes I'm referring to here, by the way, some technical notes, so don't quiz me on it. Uh, VMware, um, their, their security has some holes and the lack of shielded VMs uh, in VMware's vSAN introduces risk of data breach. And again, uh, requiring an expensive key management server, which increases that cost. I think secondly, um, you know, differentiating wise is the built-in and high availability uh, and disaster recovery. So Azure Stack HCI is built-in stretch clustering, uh, which aids in disaster recovery, whereas comparing that to the likes of Nutanix, this will be again an add-in uh, with therefore additional cost. You know, yes, it's there, it's available. You know, you've got to look at the overall cost of ownership with the solutions. Um, but it also has uh, nested resiliency, which allows even a two-node deployment to stay active in the event of a multiple hardware failure, which again is perfect for those robo or edge workloads or indeed an SMB environment. Um, um, robo, just real quick, sorry, what's a robo? Apart so from, because I'm just thinking of RoboCop it's, in my head. I'm thinking exactly. RoboCop. <laughs> we haven't got RoboCop going. <laughs> We're, we're on a par there. So yes, it's a, it's a, it's a great big me me mechanical uh, policeman that walks around. Uh, remote office, branch office. Um, ah, right, 
Sorry, it's always yeah. one of my little things that I try and uh, I always mess up uh, my co-presenters by asking them what the acronyms mean, because um, sometimes you just don't know. Uh, but we all know that robos are now remote office and branches uh, rather than uh, Robocop. Which, uh, good to know. Yeah, it is pretty synonymous in the world. So, um, but yes, oh, okay. good you, it is good that you asked, though, mate. Just to clarify. Um, so, you know, again, you know, moving on the enterprise scale and performance, so you can achieve millions of IOPS uh, and batch requests with Storage Spaces Direct, which is the obviously the software component within Azure Stack HCI. Uh, we had uh, an independent independent testing review. Um, with a company called StorageReview.com, and they reveal that Azure Stack HCI is actually four times more performant than the likes of VMware. So VMware caps out at a half million IOPS, whereas Azure Stack HCI achieves over two million IOPS. And if you're going to ask what IOPS is, that's basically the speed and the throughput of <laughs> of your uh, infrastructure. Okay, um, but you know by Microsoft owning that whole Azure stack from kernel to hypervisor to host OS including the HCI features, it essentially means that we can fully optimize the software performance. And therefore, for example, uh, Stack HCI has the highest performing SQL server uh, and Windows VMs, for example, um, even enabling SQL to run in kernel mode without risking any instability. And if you compare that to Nutanix IO, uh, to, to Nutanix, IO management runs outside the hypervisor and therefore outside kernel mode. So when a guest VM in Nutanix submits a read or write request to uh, the hypervisor, that request is passed to a controller virtual machine on each node, which ends up responding to the guest and ultimately adds an element of latency in comparison. And I think finally, in terms of the differentiators is our flexibility. So, you know, we cover a wide range of scenarios from small edge solutions, as I mentioned, starting at, you know, one node to large data centers or, or two nodes up to the large data centers, you know, we're not limited to the small uh, entities, you know, we can operate in those big enterprise. And, you know, if you look at some of the uh, sort of wins we've had recently, clearly won't name them, but we're talking into the, you know, tens of millions of dollars worth of infrastructure. And indeed, you know, the, the footprint has been enormous. Um, you know, if you think about, you know, that, that uh, the hypervisor or Hyper-V, you know, Azure public cloud runs on Hyper-V, so that hypervisor, hypervisor war is lost. Um, and therefore, you know, we are capable to run that same product line or that same hypervisor for the large enterprises on premise. There's no issue in terms of trust. I think historically you would have found the likes of VMware had that enterprise market because they're a bit more robust. But we, you know, to the point, we run Azure Public Cloud on Hyper-V, and many enterprises run their workloads in Hyper. Uh, sorry, in Azure. So, um, so ultimately, you know, we allow uh, customers to scale as, as they grow. Um, if you look at our supported hardware catalog. Uh, this gives access to more than 300 hardware models. Um, is it too many? Perhaps. But what it means is, you know, a, a, a customer, if they're running something, if it's validated and that hardware vendor wants to work with us, they can. The hardware vendor's got the capability of doing all the testing uh, to sort of bring themselves up the stack in terms of we help we the nodes and uh, more of an engineered node. What so so basically what you're saying is is that in your opinion uh, that obviously the Microsoft Azure Stack platform is the best uh, for any scale of business at any size. Um, it gives you that um, enterprise grade security um, that nobody else can really scale at the value that Microsoft brings to the party um, with all the different solutions that are available with all the partners. We've got something. We've got a, we've got a flavor lollipop that every kid would like out there for their business. But when we think about um, the typical use cases uh, influencing customers that use um, Azure Stack HCI um, over other vendors, what what would you say is really standing out for you when you know when you're talking to partners out there? You know the Dells, the HPEs, the Fujitsu's of this world. What, you know where are they typically seeing Azure Stack HCI be taken up? Um, well, look, I, I often say this, and forgive me, it's my little joke, but it's a repeated joke, and you may have heard it already before. But my simple analogy for the adoption of Azure Stack HCI is like easy origami. It's twofold. Um, ah! ba boom. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay. So firstly, you know, one of the most common woman, one of the most common cases is data center modernization, right? So this enables customers to gain better efficiency uh, by simplifying operations, removing silos in terms of those operations, the storage server, networking, and so on, uh, and reducing, yeah. of course, that that, uh, that infrastructure footprint. 
and therefore lowering the overall operating, cooling, and utility costs. Mm -hmm. All customers running legacy Windows server platforms are likely running on three-tier architectures and therefore are a perfect fit to this solution. So that's irrespective of, you know, connecting them to Azure. The great thing is by leveraging Azure Stack HA in those scenarios, it's a great stepping stone to move into public cloud, okay, or to Azure yeah. public cloud. Um, and then, you know, reaping the benefits of the extended Azure services we've already touched upon by connecting in and potentially migrating into a more public cloud scenario moving forward. But there are also, there's many of those customers have, have also been steadily migrating their workloads into Azure and have subsequently mm. been enjoying all those benefits of that solution. However, they've probably determined that not all workloads can, due to governance or latency, or indeed should move to the cloud. Mm. So extending the Azure benefits and operational simplicity that they're benefit, you know, working with in terms of Azure public um, to their on-premise workloads, it therefore makes a lot of sense. So it simplifies things, right? Okay. Um, so by enabling, uh, you know, true hybrid capabilities in that scenario, when extending on-premise into Azure, you can centrally manage the on-premise infra infrastructure to perform tasks such as, you know, as I mentioned, centralized update management, cloud-based monitoring, security and advanced threat protection, centralized governance Ooh. across that whole yeah. environment, not just in your public, but also on-premise in the same, you know, I hate to say this, but the single pane of glass uh, and leverage, you know, for on-premise that offsite, you know, backup and disaster recovery console, uh, uh, that yeah. dis discovery scenario, uh, recovery scenario, but all from a single console. Mm. Um, you recovered already. <laughs> Can I recover Sorry. what? You, re you recovered nicely I'm... from that disaster. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, so just the way you said it, it just made me laugh. Anyway, sorry. Uh, well, yeah, I, I need to. I, I need to get some new teeth, right? Clearly. You need to get some new um, teeth. You need new gnashes. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I, you you know, like, yeah, like, I think, um, like, it's it, like it sounds like there's lots of use cases that you know people can take advantage of, versus like what other vendors are. Uh, other vendors, it seems to me, are maybe approaching it more from a singularity point of view, whereas Microsoft's view is actually, you, you know, you can actually do everything with us. You know, we're not just trying to sell one thing. It's kind of like, it's kind of like the an Azure Stack piece is actually the kind of key to the to the castle of Azure, which lets you go well, into every room and cut and do whatever you need to. Well, Azure Stack gives you know the on-premise infrastructure scenario, but we haven't really touched on Arc, and I think later on in this series yeah. there will be uh, discussions on Azure Arc, and that gives you that you know the hybrid multi-cloud. Um, I'm going to say it again: the single plane of gas. It, oh. Gas. <laughs> Yeah, how very apt at this moment in time, the single pane of gas. Um, um, but yeah, the single pane of glass view in terms of the, you know, true multi-cloud, not just hybrid cloud, but multi-cloud. Yeah. Um, but Azure Stack gives, you know, a lot of those services and, and, and that would be the sort of the, the methodology in terms of our development when you compare that to Windows Server. You know, notwithstanding mm -hmm. it is an operating system, all those new features and benefits that go into Azure Stack HCI. <clears throat> Uh, but, you know, other use cases we haven't touched upon are things like, you know, as I say, remote office, edge solutions. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much data that's going to be running at the edge. Do you want to be, in, you know, deploying a massive infrastructure? No. By having something smaller that's going to be leveraging AI, machine learning, collecting data at the edge in terms mm -hmm. of certain workload cases. Um, you know, perfect solution. We're going to be able to, to support for that. Again, using Azure Stack HCI um, and a true two-node deployment where competitors, for example, typically would start at three nodes. Um, mm -hmm. I also think when you look at things like Azure Virtual Desktop, running that at the edge mm -hmm. makes more sense in terms of keeping uh, that local to the users uh, to minimize latency and ensure high performance. But uh, the, the, other king that, uh, the other key thing I wanted to mention was Azure Kubernetes service for HCI, uh, Azure Stack HCI. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail here because I'm not skilled enough around it, but what it means is those cloud-like applications the mm. Kubernetes platform is extensible to your on-premise and therefore you can enable, you know, the overall Azure uh, Kubernetes service to be able to run at the edge. Um, mm. But look, we're going to be talking a lot more around that, uh, I think, in later episodes. I'm kind of giving a few clues away here, by the way, aren't I? Yeah, no, you're, 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 you're not, you're not, um, well, you are teeing up the surprise. I'm not being very sucky. I, be I beg your pardon. No, no, no. Anyway. Well, you know, um, let's. I've got one final question for you, Jane. Right. So, when I think about the commercial advantages of why a customer would select Azure Stack HCI, 
versus a vendor, you know, a vendor's platform or whatever else. What would you say? What would you say those commercial advantages are? Well, look, we are very, very competitive. So, you know, Azure Stack HCI includes the operating system. It's one charge that covers computing, networking, storage. So S2D for storage defined uh, storage, um, software defined networking. You know, if you look at other vendors, that's an additional mm. cost. We have it all mm. inclusive. Our partnership with a lot of hardware vendors also opens up a new, uh, so a number of pricing and financing options for the hardware platform to allow that yep. shift from CapEx to usage-based models. Um, you know, that's, in, in fairness, that's not, you know, proprietary to us, but the, the sort of key partners that we work with, that's all part and parcel of it. And they can include our solutions as part of that um, OPEX model or yep. usage-based model. It is $10 per core per node. So that pricing is both simple. It doesn't fluctuate as such. And you pay for what's being used. So you can scale up or down mm -hmm. depending on that requirement. So I think one of the clever things to do is, you know, maximize the amount of VMs that you're running on a on a core, you know, with some, mm -hmm. some intelligent tweaking in terms of those workloads. And therefore you can manage that cost. You know, if you look at com comparative solutions, it's like, uh, you know, lumping a, a, a full stack of hardware on there and the way that that licensing works, you know, compared to Nutanix, for example, license is physical per core per year. Uh, and the mm. starting point is a three node cluster, meaning a network switch is also required, you know, and therefore the overall price is significantly higher, certainly in a robo, robo, we did it again, or edge scenario. Um, yeah. I think one major advantage as well, commercially, is and i said we'll touch on this uh, later but if you look at the extended support for windows 2008 2012 and sql server 2008 mm. and 2012 editions if you move those workloads onto azure stack hci the cost of that support is, in, is inclusive of that ten dollar subscription cost so okay. you know if you look at some of the larger deployments the cost of you know paying for that additional support for extended security um and transferring that same that revenue stream into converting or or, or, or moving that onto Azure Stack like HCI, it covers that investment. So combining that, therefore, you know, with those legacy three tier architectures, mm. you know, 2008, 2012, moving it onto HCI, so therefore the operational cost benefits, power cooling, and everything else, that TCO alone, yeah. with those extended security, is is really compelling. That scenario but i think finally let's just take one quick look at the licensing structure um yeah. or do you have a question do you want you just put your finger I mean, no, 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 i'm just saying like let, let's do it let's do it um so you know we have a host subscription with azure stack hci ten dollars per core per month for windows vms you know depending on whether you're going to buy a windows server or windows server data center windows server data center on top of azure stack hci gives you unlimited vms Linux VMs are unlimited, of, of course, of no charge. Um, the management can be done through Windows Admin Center, um, which generally is going to be all part and inclusive of that cost when you're buying your yep. Windows server. So there's no additional management cost there. Um, there's no cost, as I mentioned, for the extended security updates, inclusive. Um, the minimum buying is for one core for Azure Stack like HCI. And there is a 60 days free trial. So you could, doubt, if you so wish, you could check the validated hardware stack that's mm. out there. We didn't actually touch, by the way, very quickly in terms of the validated versus, in, versus integrated solutions. Mm. The integrated solutions are a lot more low touch. So yes, there's validated infrastructure of that 300 list. But there are probably three or four vendors in, in globally um, that provide an integrated system. And, you know, in terms of the operational certain deployment it's all pre-installed you know it's just mm. ultimately run it connected to azure uh, and the then the life cycle well, correct yeah in terms of that you know well your deployment time your testing time and 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 if it's already pre-integrated and validated by the vendor themselves saves you mr customer running all that testing and indeed yeah. probably some kind of you know a, a secondary infrastructure lab kit before you're going to go and deploy into production if the if the vendors yeah. are saying this is going to work and there's almost a one-click upgrade in terms of the life cycle from a firmware patch level and everything else from windows yeah. admin center by the way um you know it's a no-brainer right so you're simplifying operations I mean, you're simplifying you know, what's, the, the, what's, what's, the, what's the um deployment engineering costs for a couple of days you know there's a, well, there's, a there's a few just that a few itself, there, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Absolutely. You know, you can have things up and running within within a day or two, as opposed to a week or two. You know, there is a significant yeah. cost there. Um, you know, comparing that to VMware as an example, you know, to get comparable type of uh, functionality, you would need vSphere Enterprise Plus. That would be around uh, three and a half thousand dollars list. You would need vSAN storage. That's another seven thousand, uh, another four thousand. Therefore, putting about seven and a half thousand. Um, if you compare that to ourselves, it's significantly lower. Um, uh, you know, but the, the, look, the fact that we're including a lot of those products into one solution with a mm. subscription based predictable model that you can scale up and down based on how you use comparing to, you know, the, notwithstanding the support costs with the other vendors as well. Right. You know, they, you've got your, your, your outlay for the license and then it's the ongoing support. Mm. Um, you know, you will find if you do a comparative, um, I suppose, solution bomb or whatever it may be, you want to ever call it, we will be significantly cheaper. Okay. So in summary, I think, you know, just to, to point out, I think we've got, the, you know, with native Azure integration, we're the only HCI solution today that scales to two nodes. We've got those integrated full stack updates that we just touched upon. Um, we have that industry lead in HCI performance, the 2 million IOPS that I alluded to, and native disaster recovery with stretch clustering that's built in at no extra cost, and indeed extended security updates at no extra cost, all included. Can't argue with that. You can't argue with that. Well, you can if no. you so wish, and I'm sure there's people Wait, that. I'm sure the people can, that will argue with that. Sure. But, but I won't um, argue with you about that. So, look, um, Jay, look, Jason, Jay, um, look, thanks so much for for jumping on, on on this episode, the first episode of season three, Rock to the Cloud, um, where we talk to all things server, um, Azure, and cloud related tech. Um, and actually, hopefully, you've learned a few things from from what Jay was saying around Azure Stack HCI. He is available. Make sure you reach out to him if you've got any questions. He's on LinkedIn. Find him. Um, so um, what we're going to do now is, um, as as we always try and do with every episode, is just you know, try and have talk some talk some tech, talk some uh, excite, uh, you know good stuff at the beginning of the show. But actually, we try and have a little bit of fun. We know you guys love the meme review. So the meme review is back for season three. Um, and, uh, you know, if you've got any memes, or if you want to show any memes, uh, we'd love to get your guys thoughts, rate them and let us know what you think of them. And uh, we'll get them on the show. Uh, certainly. Right. So, uh, right. Uh, let's, um, let's do this. This is our first meme review of season three. So I click my fingers and we see the meme, right? Here we go. I want to buy a fog machine and put it in a data center so that when I open up the door, the fog spills out and I can say, welcome to the cloud. I crumb. <laughs> do you think there are people out there that want to do that? Like, cause I mean, Jay, obviously the, the cloud is someone's data center, but there's no cloud faking a cloud. Come on. What, what do you think? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with that. I'm, I'm maybe, maybe, that, maybe, that maybe what's missing is dancing around handbags whilst running that fog machine in the data center. I'm not sure that's going to be uh, welcomed or the, the, the danger of knocking something over or something. But yeah, I mean, that's how I associate fog machines, mate, is uh, on the dance floor. On the dance floor. Well, uh, fair enough. I mean, the amount of lights as well in the data center, you could have like the lights going, the smoke going. Very good. Uh, yes. play, a bit of, play a bit of music in there. And um, yeah, but I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you a fog, I'm going to get you a fog machine for Christmas. I think that's what I'm going to get you. Or just, or just when you put a face mask on, just keep your glasses on at the same time. Yeah, no, that's that that works for every, everybody now that we've got COVID. Although actually, I, no, I just did a COVID test today. Um, I'm safe. I'm safe. Uh, just so you know. So yeah, so um, good to go out into the world. Um, with that in mind, have you, let's got, do... have you got the one? Have you got the one with the two lines on for when you need to make excuses, Tom? No, no, no. I'll get the red pen. Draw that on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, it's always good to have some con convenient covid nowadays uh, anyway let's not talk about that let's talk about meme number two. Oh wow look there's a new rotation out of graphic there okay according to this the planet earth was once populated by humans uh, then in 2012 they all moved to the cloud <laughs> oh it's very oh, matrix. very very 
very matrix very very matrix um well i it's true though we're like we're every like metaverse that's the next that's the next big place joe have you got your spot carved out in the in the metaverse no but you know what something the older i get and when i look at myself on the screen it's probably a better place to be right <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, if they can fix uh, fix things going wrong in the cloud, then uh, then I might just I might jump in there. Uh, all right, well, look, everybody, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, just to summarise really quickly, um, hybrid by design uh, is what Azure Stack uh, HCI is and Azure. Um, it was, so we start from the cloud down to the the hardware. Um, now all the hardware can join in. Uh, we can have multi cloud scenario, and everybody can have a party with all their all their kit. And I think the key differentiator from uh, what you were saying, Jane, was actually um, the value of uh, of what's required for people with their workloads is that they can do as much as as they want um, and pay a very affordable, uh, you know, convenient fixed cost for the amount of data they need to work with. So that's great. And security is our key differentiator here at Microsoft. Nobody else can offer the enterprise security that we do as standard. So that's amazing. Look, I've also got to tell you something, um, everybody. And I know you're going to be gutted when you hear this news and, 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 and Jason did allude to a few of these things, but um, this is my last show. Um, I've um, convinced Microsoft to give me uh, another job in another area of the business, so I'm not going to be talking uh, rock to the cloud anymore. So, um, you know, what are we going to do? Who is going to host the show? Jason, who's going to host the show? I think you're going to host the show. You're <laughs> oh, the new host yes. of Rock to the Cloud. Wow. Yes, thank there you very are. much. So, so Jason, you're our new host. Um, look, uh, it's been a privilege to have you on the first show of season three, and it's going to be a pleasure for the audience to have you for every other show of season three. So well, Jason, let's, the reins are yours. I think, I think it's going to be a lot to live up to, Tom. You know, I've, as I've told you before, you are almost uh, wasted uh, working at Microsoft. Rather, I think you'd be better off at ITV or the BBC, for example. And I don't mean that in terms of Microsoft being, you know, not having your value, but clearly your presenting skills are, are second to none in my humble opinion um Mate, but thank you that. for this privilege i never thought as to joining microsoft that you'd uh that i'd be getting the reins to, to host a, a show online but you know what i'm quite happy to take on the challenge uh and hopefully you know well let's 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 hope we get some really good guests on um in fact, I know we're going to get some really good guests on. Yeah, uh, we've, got good guests. we've got good guests lined up for season three, Jason. Don't you worry about that. Uh, but um, but the ones, you know, to be able to, to take away the onus on me having to be as, as wonderful as you in terms of your presenting, and they can be, you know, the, the centre of attention. But great, Tom, thank you very much indeed. I very much look forward to um, to hosting the series. Excellent. And I think the, the audience will prefer it. So uh, you wait till you get the feedback. I'm sure it will be nothing but positive. Uh, so right. everybody, thank you very much for joining us today on my final show of Rock to the Cloud, um, episode one, season three. And I'm going to leave you uh, for evermore uh, with my friend Jason. Um, he's the new host. And um, yeah, have a great day and uh, carry on subscribing. And if you've got any questions or you want to know anything about server tech, cloud tech, Azure tech, or any of that kind of good stuff, uh, let Jay know. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. Thank you.